Hello, my lovers. Welcome to part two of our Treasure Island trip. Mark and I flew out here on Baby Shark, that's the name of Mark's two-seater hovercraft, to reach this island that was used as a dumping ground by the Victorians and that is now beginning to erode out. What historic relics will we find today in the glorious mud of the creek? Today on the cryptic creek of treasures. Uh, we just love this place, so hopefully there'll be a few goodies in that mud. We're just exploring these banks, and uh, Mark pulled this up, and he's discovered. Well, I spotted that. Oh, is it complete? Should we to? No, it's a bit broken. Look chips. This is a Victorian fairy light. Myself, what a tit. Go on, get under it. That's why you should always wear gloves. But sometimes it's too exciting, plus, I've got to keep turning the camera on, so I don't always have them. But that's a nice find if it is. We found one of these before. Lovely. Oh, oh what a shame. Oh. Still, I reckon that could be cut down. You just lose the lip. It's a nice find though. I decided to leave this adorable Victorian fairy light as found, and it can join the rest of my growing collection. What colour will I find next? Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be there when I find my next one. Oh, trademark. Mark, yeah. Mark, my <laughs> name. Similar to the one you found earlier. I think it's poison. Yeah, so it's got the dimples for poison. Yeah. Let's go on cross now. What is that, Mark? Mark, Mark. Oh, it's the name of it. I think it might be the name of the company. Oh, Lysol? Might be Lysol. Lysol is detergent or, uh, you know, like cleaning product. Yeah. So after doing some research, I'd like to announce that the award for the most misogynistic advertising goes to, you've guessed it, Lysol. Check out these adverts from the early 1900s. They suggest that Lysol be used as a vaginal douche. And if you didn't use it, assuming you're a woman of course, you could lose your husband. And Lysol would help you win him back. It even came with a special kit. Anyway, after I dug a little deeper, I found out that due to the lack of female contraception at the time, that this was being discreetly sold as an alternative. The advert claims that it cleanses the vaginal canal, even with the presence of mucus matter. Oh, you've got to feel sorry for the women of this era. And I'm sorry if you're eating your dinner, folks. What do you think that is? Just found that. That's ropes go through that for boats and bits and pieces. Or yeah, it's like a pulley, isn't it? Line. I just yeah. I thought it was practical, but then I thought, why is it decorated? Was it just because they could? Maybe it was for like a pair of curtains or something. It is, it's a toggle. Toggle, yeah. What do you think, guys? Comment below if you know. Strange little green curio. Would have probably had a rope through there or a piece of string. But what was it for exactly? Drapes? Oh, that's nice, Mark. There we go. WMHG gear. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, shame the top's gone. Catherine Road, East Ham. Oh, East London. 
That's nice. I do love that. But I can cut it down for you if you want, mate. Yep. You can do that. Excellent. Yeah, that's lovely. Well done. That's classic. Love it. Stone ginger beer. I wonder what stone means. Doesn't sound very appetising, does it? Time now for a quick cut down. And I've been cutting down broken bottles for years now. And people have told me they're worried about my fingers, but don't worry, it's a very blunt diamond cutting disc. And even though I could get the top from another broken ginger beer and marry the two, this way the bottle has a purpose. And in this case, a paintbrush holder. This bottle was made by the man by the unusual name of Williard Mays. Do we have any Williards watching? I'd love to know. And he lived at 118 Catherine Road with his wife, Emily. We can see here in the census from 1911 that he is a mineral water manufacturer. I believe this house is the same house he would have lived in. And part of me wants to visit them and give the owners this bottle as a history of the house. But there's a good chance they won't even be interested, which is why I put it on my Etsy store for you guys instead. Mark's just showing this to me. Very unusual little salt shaker. Yeah. I think it might have gone into something else, maybe. Like maybe a silver case or something. Who knows? But that's quite nice. Now, if you watched part one of this epic mud venture, then you would have seen Mark and I contemplating the use of this similar looking item. It has a larger hole at the bottom that was used for pouring wet slip into the mould and lots of smaller holes on top. I suggested at the time it was possibly a posy holder, but many of you commented that it was a hat pin holder. And I think it is, so thanks very much to everyone that helped us ID that find. I read all the comments, so if you think you know, comment below or just leave a message of support, that helps too. Cheers mud lovers! So are we thinking that this is another hat pin holder? Let me know in the comments below! Not bung this up on the Etsy store. I spy with my little eye a little hex can ink. Beautiful. This is turning into a fantastic day. Well, the sun's out, it's a beautiful day. Yep. Mark's picking up stuff and I've just flipped over a bottle and there's a name or something on it, so come and take a look. Here we go, look. <laughs> Austin Balls. Sounds like it should be in a Austin Powers film. Um, oh, the top's a bit gone. But it's all there, you know. It's just got like a weird smash, but I love it because it's got Bethnal Green Road. I did a bit of research on him. <laughs> Good old Austin Balls. I wonder what his story was. Born in 1872, William Austin Balls was a victualler. That's someone who sold booze and a landlord at 379 Bethnal Green Road at Ye Old George Pub. Here's a photo of the pub, but curiously with Harry J. Balls on the sign. And that wasn't the name of his father, because he was George and he was a blacksmith. And William Austin Balls didn't have any brothers named Harry. So who knows? If you know, comment below. And when you visit the record for this pub on pubhistory.com, the first thing you see is a leaflet created by Mr. Balls, advertising the fine wine sold by the cask, gallon or bottle or glass. How cool is that? He was a landlord at the Old George in Bethnal Green from 1915 to at least 1936. And I'm happy to report that this pub still stands. I always get a buzz knowing that these old pubs are open because during 2023, 50 pubs a month close in. And it's great to see that some still stand the test of time. Mr. Balls was a good old boy too. And articles survive show that he had an OBE and was elected master of the Worshipful Company of Carmen of the City of London. This charitable association dates back to 1517, when the carmen of the city were used to move products around London. These days, even royalty are involved, such as Princess Anne becoming a master as well. So Mr. Balls was in good company. 
Mr. and Mrs. Balls donated goblets and maces to the Carmens and often helped less fortunate children at Christmas. Naturally, these good public deeds helped business, so much so that he went on to own another pub, also called the George, this time the George Tavern, which again remains open and is a hipster music venue. I wonder what Austin Balls would make of it today. I'll just pick this up and uh, flip it over. I don't usually get too excited over milk bottles because there's only a few real makers, but this one's got loads of writing on. So we're gonna give it a quick wash and see if there's any clues as to what it is. It's just a bit interesting. Well, that's cool. There's some sort of monogram on there. It's like a, I don't know, some sort of, I don't know if I'm seeing an angel or someone dancing. Oh, look at that. Wow. Well, I can't work out what any of that says right now. Something for the bones. That's really cool. Again, <laughs> it's a day of first. I'm finding things that I haven't found before, which is always awesome because it keeps, keeps it interesting for you guys as well. I think it is milk. It's saying they're milk, but obviously they've hammed up the uh, healing properties of it all. Some sort of miracle cure, obviously trying to sell more. For warmth and energy. Oh, it's got like FSVMP on there. I love it. Anyway, let's clean it up and see if we can get some proper detail off it. I'll go and show you Mark this one. Let's bring that one then. Oh, wow. It's brilliant. Unusual, isn't it? That is really good. Fantastic. Do you see the, see the picture of the woman on there? Yeah. It's like a some sort of dancing fairy angel or something. Might be completely wrong, but that's what mm. it's like to me. And it's sort of giving you all these miracle cures for warmth and energy and stuff. Love it. That is brilliant. Never dismiss the humble milk bottle, I've just learned. Well, ain't that the truth? The hundred years of slime was covering up this beautiful monogram of a pixel girl holding a tray with what looks like a glass of milk on it. This bottle was produced by the National Milk Publicity Council, whose job it was to promote the healthy benefits of drinking milk to the nation. Let's read what the council put on this bottle from the 1920s to get us to consume more milk. Okay. Fanny fat and Susie sugar for warmth and energy. Cool. There's a lot of talk of lady parts on today's episode, isn't there? <laughs> oh, and for any Americans watching, a fanny over here means a woman's private parts and is also an old fashioned name. Anyway, I digress. Violet vitamin for life and growth. Mini mineral for bones and teeth. Peter protein for muscles. So they tried to use names there to try and make you remember different health benefits. This campaign and various others continued into the 1950s and beyond. Can anyone remember the slogan, drink a pint of milk a day? If you can, leave it in the comments below. That's cool. Must have missed this on the way here, but I think it's another big Boots the Chemist. Boots the Cash Chemist as well. Oh, I'm gonna need a little help here. Perfect, perfect condition. I like that. It's a bit big, but it's coming home with me today. Well, after a clean up, I managed to find a nice old cork stopper to go in it. Perfect. I love how being out in the elements all these years has highlighted the swells from the glass making techniques of yesteryear. A pinch of mustard yellow. And don't forget the ale of malt. I do like an ale. <laughs> Another cool shard from the Creek of Wonderfulness. But if only this plate was complete, I'll be looking at $675. Oh. This is from a Staffordshire Frogs, Cows, Rabbitware Charger platter from 1907. The phrase reads, 
season me well with pepper and salt and just a pinch of mustard yellow and don't forget the ale of malt for that's the juice that makes me mellow well cheers to that Well, we've come back to the place where we found a couple of Roman pots in the, far, in the past and Mark's just come across this. Wow, that's a lovely example, isn't it? It's is beautiful. Yeah, I think we'll take that one. Cracking. Oh, you can't say that word around here. Not with pots around. <laughs> so we started cracking. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we'll preserve that. Sweet find. Might find the old, the old pot here. All those black bits you can see are part of broken Roman pots. We think they were making uh, a pottery out here. Mad to think that that was turned by a Roman hand. Oh, got the top of one. base of one. Well done. Well done, that man. Well, well done you. I didn't do anything. You're that man, aren't you? <laughs> we survived. We're alive. We're all good. So, Chris, we've got loads of nice bottles. Good find. It was a fantastic day. Well, what an epic mudlark yet again. Let's take a closer look at these finds. So I've arranged them nicely into their colours, <laughs> blues, greens, browns, clears and stoneware down there. Let's take a quick, quick look, nice couple of uh, cotton reel inks, interesting little pepper shaker we think, couple of blues, cut that one down, that looked really nice. Well I didn't feel myself finding this beautiful blue bottle, my bucket overfloweth at the end and I think the tide was coming in as I quickly saved it. Anyway. Not only do I plan to cut this down, but also do some of my bottle art on it. It's been a while. The previous project turned out very well when I created an underwater scene on a barnacle clad Victorian black glass bottle. Back then I used metallic sharpies, which worked a treat, but always wanting to try different techniques. I thought I'd try this gold relief outliner. You tend to use this for making a stained glass effect. I did some preliminary sketches beforehand on paper, but what you see is freehand straight on the bottle. No sketches or anything, so I've only got one chance to get it right. And I can tell you that painting with a tube as opposed to a brush or pen is tricky as well, and controlling the flow requires a steady, constant squeeze. Seeing as this beautiful blue bottle resembles a poison bottle, I decided that that was the theme I was going for. I'll create a scroll type label with the word poison, surrounded by roses and their prickly shoots. And add a skull inspired by the Mexican Day of the Dead, all the while trying not to smudge the rest of it. And of course, a lovely sailing ship. And as it looks like it's night time, due to that beautiful coal bait blue, I'll add some moon and stars. And like before, I'll be selling it, so this could be yours. So head on over to my eBid store, that's eBid, 
not Etsy for this one. The link is in the description below and you will be in a chance of owning it. So good luck. Well, I think I've got a little fan. Nelly! Is it Nelly? Do you like it? No, it doesn't contain biscuits. Sorry, mate. And uh, yeah, unusual little blue one there. Mark gifted this to me, so I might put this one on the Etsy store as well as a few others. So check that out if you uh, want to buy any of these. Can't keep them all, so why not share them, you know? Little greens there, gonna possibly cut this one down if it survives. Might be a bit fragile that one after the uh, life it's had. Nice brown ones there, for real. This would be quite good to uh, research on. Mr. Austin Balls. Little boots chemist there, hiding at the back. Lovely milk bottle, not sure what that one was, but I'll clean it up and let you know. Clear glass really and a few aquas, tablespoons, tablespoons, poisons, nice inky and of course the best ink of the day, HJ writing ink, something else underneath there. Um, that's a really nice colour actually, I didn't realise it but after I just cleaned it quickly it's actually a light blue colour, yeah I really like that. Cut the stoneware bits and bobs. Got that ginger beer. I'm going to cut down, and uh, our man there, who's the uh, the new conqueror, Mark's lovely little cup, the Flotilla Company. Obviously, his little spoon. He's had a great day, hasn't he? This charming person. My little talky cup that cheers. The cup that cheers. Hastings, and uh, Mark keeps ducks, and he's given me some duck eggs. So he's got there. So we've got a little egg cup there. You can actually use it once again. But that egg cup never thought he was going to be holding an egg once he got discarded that time over 100 years ago. Um, and of course this lovely little uh, dish which has got butterflies and flowers and stuff on which I'll see if Nicola likes. Well I'm delighted to report that Nicola loved the bowl and she told me she'll use it every morning to eat her cereal from. If you want to see me gifting this beautiful bowl to Nicola, then check out her channel and I'm sure the video will be out in due course. And obviously the huge piece of Roman, we've had a few other pieces actually, I've got in my pocket still. Gets a few other little bits. So yeah, it's a fantastic day. We've um, got loads to clean up and do some research for. Still finding stuff in my pocket. <laughs> Let's take a moment to admire the marks that the potter made to this huge chunk of gorgeous Roman pottery some 1800 odd years ago. This is black burnished ware from the 2nd or 3rd century and was probably thrown away at the time due to an imperfection, so there's no chance of ever having found this one whole. Right Mark, open wide. Oh, uh, oh you got your tongue pierced. Stick it out. <laughs> Well, my lovers, thanks for watching. It's been a fantastic, epic journey once again with good old Mark, good old Blue Eyes on Baby Shark. <laughs> we got home safely. We did, it was an epic journey. So let's do it again soon, yeah? Yes. Excellent. Now for a bit of a clean up. Yep, we get muddy so you don't have to. If you missed part one of this epic mud venture, then click this thumbnail and you can watch that. Thanks so much for watching, my lovers, and I'll see you on the next mud venture.